Hello and welcome back to the Hudson Hangout. Today, I have the great honor of interviewing National Public Radio anchor, Ari Shapiro. He is the host of after, the afternoon news show, All Things Considered. He has reported from Air Force One, covered many wars, and even reported from above the Arctic Circle. He has covered pre- presidential campaigns and was a White House correspondent. Hi, Ari. Hi, Hudson. It's so good to see you. So good to see you new. Now, let's get this interview on with. Let's do it. I'm excited to interview the interviewer. Yeah, I'm excited to answer some questions for a change because I'm used to asking them. And frankly, it's nice to mix things up a bit. Mm -hmm. As a kid, did you ever imagine you'd be such an accomplished reporter when you were a grown up? You know, when I was a kid, I had a lot of different dreams. I, when I was really little, I thought I wanted to be a baker so that I could eat all of the cakes and cookies that I made. Then I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian so that I could spend time with animals. Then I thought maybe I would want to be an actor. And all of the time I was thinking about that, my parents would drive me around in a car with NPR playing. And I never even thought about working for NPR until I was much older. But I think that must have just seeped into my brain because I heard it in the background and it stuck with me. And so then when I got to NPR and I got to work with all those people who I had listened to my whole life, it was really exciting. Mm-hmm. How did you get your first job at NPR? Well, I started as an intern. Do you know what an internship is? Have you ever heard of an intern before? Well, when you are a student, you're going to school to learn things. And when you are an employee, you are hired to do work, but an internship is a little bit between the two. You're at a workplace, but you're kind of there to learn. And so I got an internship with NPR, which means they let me spend my time there learning and doing some work. And I worked with somebody named Nina Totenberg who covers the Supreme Court. And so I was her intern and working with her and learning from her I got to go to the Supreme Court and I got to read judicial opinions and I got to hear lawyers making arguments in front of the Supreme Court justices. And that was my first experience at NPR. Mm -hmm. What does a typical workday look like? And do you get to pick your own stories or does someone pick them for you? Well, first, let me tell you about a typical workday. What time do you usually start your day if you're going to school on a normal day? Mm, 8, 8.15. That's about when I start my work day too. About, well, maybe a little later, about 8.30, I would say. And so from 8.30 to 9.30, I'm reading the news and I'm looking for interesting stories and I'm trying to get up to speed on what happened since I went to sleep last night. And then every day at 9.30, everybody who works on All Things Considered with me gathers together Since the pandemic, we've been gathering together on something like Zoom instead of in a room, but we used to be all in a room together. And everybody says, I think we should do this story today. I think we should do that story. And everybody brings different ideas. And then we get to work on it and put the show together. And then at four o'clock, the show goes live and it's live for two hours. But then when it stops being live at six o'clock, we stay on call. Do you know what on call means? Have you ever heard that term? On the call? It means you're available to do something if you need to. So they can call me up and say, hey, something just happened. We need you to update the news show. And so after six o'clock, I'm on call. And the reason we're on call is what city are you in right now? Um, Los Angeles. Okay, so you might think that that was an irrelevant question, but actually, the reason is, in Los Angeles, All Things Considered is going to be on a couple hours from now. And if some big news happens right now, well, the show that we stopped doing at 6 p.m. Eastern time is not going to have the latest news for you in Los Angeles when you listen this evening. And so I'm on call from 6 to 10 p.m., just in case there's news so we can update the program and make sure that you in Los Angeles have news that is just as up to date as listeners in Washington, D.C., where I live. Mm -hmm. And then your other question was, do I get to pick my own stories? Wait. And the um, answer to, oh, yeah, sorry. Didn't mean to run away with the conversation there. um, You had had something on call 
on Monday, that, and that's why you couldn't do it. You had to go to the White House. That is exactly right. So on Monday, we were scheduled to record this, but mm -hmm. President Trump had a news conference, and so I had to be available to update the show, which I do right here with this microphone. And that was why I couldn't record this on Monday, and that was why we had to postpone until Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. And what were you saying about picking your own stories? Oh, well, you asked if I choose my own stories. And I have a lot of input in the stories that we do, but it's a team effort. So I work with producers and editors and a lot of other people who are on the staff of All Things Considered, whose voices you don't hear on the air, but whose work you hear on the air, because they help me come up with stories and find people to interview and think of interesting questions to ask. So it's a real team effort, even if you don't hear every member of the team on the radio. Mm -hmm. So sort of like my mom. Exactly. Did your mom help you with these questions? Yes. Questions, the, bio, uh, talent booker, sort of. <laughs> talent booker. That is a sophisticated sure. title. So you've got a team just like I do. Mm -hmm. But you're the one on the air, just like I'm the one on the air. Mm -hmm. Is it scary to report in war zones? You know, um, it's you, you, you want to be safe. And you want to be aware of the risks. And if you don't pay close attention to the risks, then you might be more likely to put yourself in danger. So, you know, there are different kinds of being scared. And I think when you're reporting from war zones, you want to be responsible with the risks that you're taking. And you want to make decisions that are safe. And, and part of that is having what I would call a healthy fear. So not a paralyzing fear, like I can't do anything kind of afraid, but a healthy fear, just like if you walk up to a strange dog on the street that you've never met before, are you gonna walk right up and pet that dog without saying anything to the owner or looking to see if there is an owner around? No. No, what are you gonna do first? Ask the owner if it's friendly and if there is no owner, just probably just back away. Yeah, so does that mean you're afraid of being bitten by the dog? No, but it could happen. Yeah, exactly. And so I would say it's the same kind of thing when you're reporting in a war zone. It's not so much that you're afraid, but you want to take the responsible steps to make sure that you don't get in danger, sort of like asking the dog's owner if the dog is nice before you go up and petting it. Mm -hmm. Who were your all-time favorite interviews, and who would you still like to interview? I think when you talk about all-time favorite interviews, a lot of people would immediately think of famous politicians or movie stars or, or, or pop stars. And I have gotten to interview some very well-known people in business and politics and you know, entertainment. But really my favorite people to interview are the people whose names you would have never heard of. The people who have stories that I think Americans will really care deeply about and listen closely to because they're so compelling. People whose voices you wouldn't have heard otherwise, whose names you wouldn't know otherwise. So it's easy for me to say, oh, it's great to interview the president or it's great to interview some rock star whose music I've been listening to for years. But the people who are really my favorites are usually the people who I've never heard of before I interview them. And when I meet them, I just get really excited that I get to share their stories with listeners like you. Mm -hmm. And who would you still like to interview? Oh, hmm. You know, I don't have a bucket list. Do you, do you know what a bucket list is? Okay, so I don't have a bucket list. But the nice thing about my job is that it's just different every day. And so I show up every morning not knowing who I'm going to talk to that day necessarily, but knowing that I'm going to be able to have some interesting conversations and wind up the day knowing about things that I didn't know when I showed up to work that morning. Mm -hmm. Who would you still like to interview? Who's on your bucket list? Hmm. So many people. So many people. Give me a couple names. Um, some people from a TV show I like. Maybe Charlie Higg Higginson, if you've ever heard of him. 
Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Brit- British actor and story writer, so probably not. Oh, okay. People. More people, I'll just say that. Yeah, yeah. Well, this show is a great opportunity for you to do that. Mm-hmm. But this one might be the last one in the season for a really long time, so. Oh, no. Why is it? Well, we don't have to go too deep into that, but can you tell me why? Am I the season finale? Probably. That's so exciting. Yeah, you, you are, but later in the year I might do a blooper show. Oh, I love a blooper reel. Blooper reels are great. Mm-hmm. Many people do, may not know that you are a working singer and performed at the Hollywood Bowl. My family is hoping to see you perform at the Broad Stage with Alan Cumming next summer. How did you become a singer? Oh, I'm really hoping that I get back on stage too. Unfortunately, so many of our shows have been postponed, but we've rescheduled a lot of them for next year. So... I hope I will make it back to LA to perform either with Pink Martini or with Alan Cumming doing the show that he and I wrote together. Um, you know, I was always a fan of Pink Martini because they're from my hometown of Portland, Oregon. And um, we became friends over the years. And whenever they would come to Washington, DC, I would throw a party for them or a brunch or a dinner or something like that. And there was one year where we had a barbecue that just turned into a sing-along around my piano. And then the next day, the band leader, whose name is Thomas, asked if I would sing a song on the band's next album. And so I flew out to Portland and I recorded the song with them. And then the first place I ever sang with the band was the Hollywood Bowl. Have you been to the Hollywood Bowl? Mm-hmm. It's great. It's like an outdoor living room in Los Angeles. Yeah, sort and, of. Except that yeah. there's like millions of people in it. And there's 18,000 people. Who did you see perform at the Hollywood Bowl? I've seen it on like a play, a few plays, I think. Oh, cool. And my parents have seen people at it. That's great. Well, that's the first place I ever performed. And it made me nervous. But after that, I knew that there would never be a place as scary as that to perform. So I just kept touring with the band and recording with them. And now I've been performing with them for about 11 years. How old are you? Eight. Eight. So I've been performing with them since before you were born, Hudson. Mm -hmm. Crazy, huh? Mm -hmm. What interviewing advice do you have for me and for people who want to be a journalist? You know, my advice is to listen to what the person is saying who you're interviewing and follow the conversation where it leads and ask questions that come to mind as you have the conversation, even if those aren't questions that are on the page. Like when we were talking about being on call and you mentioned that we were supposed to do this conversation on Monday, but then we had to postpone to Wednesday. That was sort of like a natural progression of a conversation. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, often the best parts of an interview come from things that you weren't planning on asking and things that you might not have expected, but they're questions that pop into your head naturally because of what you just heard the person say. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the uh, tips. You're very welcome. What is the hardest story you've ever covered? You know, sometimes you have to report on things that are really painful and sad and difficult. And Often people want to share those stories because they want people to know about what happened, but talking about them can make people very sad. And so sitting with them and hearing about those really sad stories can be difficult, but I know that it's important to do. And so that's something we do, even though it's tough. Mm -hmm. What is the most hour you've worked straight through covering a story? That would probably be covering a presidential campaign because especially in the final weeks of a campaign, you might be in six different states in one day, just going from one rally to another, to another, to another. And in between those, you're trying to file stories and, and uh, you know, get your work done and you barely get any sleep and you barely get time to eat. So that can be really exhausting. 
But it's different this year because the president and the and uh, Joe Biden, the, the Democratic candidate, are not out on the road campaigning. So a lot of the reporters who are covering the campaign are covering them from their home base, just like I am. Mm -hmm. So how many hours po was probably the longest? I don't even know the number, but it was it just felt like it was endless. Oh, you mean like 12 hours or something? Or even more. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you online? Well, they can hear my stories on their local member station or at npr.org, or you could download the NPR One app or the NPR app. I'm also on Twitter and I'm on Instagram. And both of those places, I'm at Ari Shapiro. And there are probably some other places, but that's a good start. Where can they find you online, Hudson? Uh, at the, H the Hudson Hangout on YouTube. And that's pretty much it. So if this is the season finale, can I ask you what you've enjoyed about this season and what's going to stick with you? I don't know. Maybe my interview with Randy Newman. Yeah, that was a good one. Maybe my What did you learn from that interview? What stuck with you about the Randy Newman conversation? Mm -hmm. I don't really know. He just sort of talked. Well, what's your favorite Randy Newman song? How about that? Probably I Love LA. That's a good one, especially for somebody who lives in LA like you. Hmm, another good interview. Probably with you. Oh, thanks. Mm hmm Let's see. Um Maybe also with uh, Sean Polofsky. That was pretty nice. funny. Well, you've had a great season. Congratulations. Thanks. And see you next time at the Hudson Hangout. Bye. A quick note to all my fans. This is indeed the end of season one, since I have to go back to school. Darn it. I have planned some special episodes in the fall, and we'll be working on season two. Make sure you subscribe so you know when they post. See you again this fall in the Hudson Hangout.